Mute. Hello, folks. We will be getting started in about a minute or two. If you recall, when we get on, please mute yourself so that we don't get any background noise. And we'll be getting started. We're just allowing time for everyone to get into the meeting. Okay, folks, I'm just about going to get started. I just want to remind anyone that if you have any friends or family that was not able to attend this evening, curious about the district's future, we always record this and place it on our YouTube page, Hanover Area School District YouTube page, immediately following these meetings. So this will be posted, I'd say no more late, uh, no later than 7.30, 8 o'clock this evening uh, for folks that may be working or unable to attend. Um, tell them have no worries. Uh, this is there for the taking after. Okay, so I'd like to welcome you to our community update. We want to move into what we're trying to accomplish here uh, for the children and the future of this district. Okay, we're going to move through our synchronized learning that we have been started uh, and trying to still accomplish throughout the course of a day. We are trying to use what we call the synchronistic learning uh, format. This is us trying to reach and muddle through our 180 days of school. That's the normal length of time for a school year. Um, this does seem like an eternity for folks out there who had to change their lives uh, based on the pandemic that we're going through. But we are still set for a graduation eighth. Uh, we are set for a graduate a graduation on the eighth of June. Um, on a daily basis, ladies and gentlemen. We uh, serve 300 minutes a day at the elementary level, equating to 900 hours per school year. The secondary level, we are trying to accomplish 330 minutes per day, uh, reaching 990 hours. Um, right now, we are following every guideline extremely strictly, and we are making sure that everyone is safe at all times. This Board of Education, myself, and this administration is solely committed to making sure that every student returns to you in the manner that you sent them. We never want to see students arrive at any of our buildings within the Hanover Area School District and return home with any virus or anything other than what they left with. So we have strictly followed these guidelines. And if you see, this is all based on a seven day scale where we have been following the low, moderate, and substantial models. Um, anything beyond the 10% in a seven-day schematic has uh, allowed for a remote learning fashion. And that's what we have been participating in. Um, next slide, please, Lisa. Right now, if you see that the previous slide said 10% or beyond, uh, we today are at 23.48%. The uh, county is still listed in a substantial status, but I will tell you that 23.48 is one of the best rates that we have been seeing in a long time. Our county and especially our zip code of 18706 has always been in the high 30s to mid 30s. So this is very, very optimistic and it looks very good. Although it's double what the recommendation of both departments of health and education um, recommend for us bringing students in, we are most certainly moving in the right direction. As a result, the Hanover Area School District is trying to traject when this rate will continually drop and merge perfectly with in-person instruction. So just below, I'm gonna take you through some of the, the new guidance that has been dispersed at the end of 2020. And if you take a peek at this, we do fit into the category of a large school district, uh, pre-K to 12 buildings, and they're broken down as specific categories. And I don't wanna bore you with all these specifics that are on here, but um, there is, is broken down as to what we just spoke of in the low, moderate and substantial. However, the, um, the recommendations are that in the left column, it states one to five students or staff members do not require the Hanover Area School District to close the school. All we do is simply clean the area notify the Department of Health. The Department of Health then notifies the families 
who are in contact with the positive case. And this gradually increases in severity as you go down to the moderate or substantial levels. Personally, I do not like this and I am not a fan of this recommendation. Again, as I said in the beginning of this presentation this evening, um, I am not a fan of having you come to school and having this as an acceptable format um, for one to five students being acceptable to having positive cases within our buildings. Um, these students need to eat lunch with our students. They need to ride in the bus. And um, I am not a fan of this recommendation. So um, that is why there's been lengthy time between the fact of us starting school and allowing for in-person instruction. So I'm going to slowly move into where we are going. The proposed return to school is our highest need students on March the 1st. I have pushed that out two weeks beyond what we originally had stated. We had stated February 16th uh, due to the right direction of cases moving in a downward trend. We are pushing that out two more weeks in optimistic hope that we continue to trend in that direction and allow for a safe return of our faculty, students and staff. So if you see here the autistic support, emotional support, life skills classrooms will all return on March the 1st. And then you see the last bullet point folks, that is the highest need students, that's a case by case basis. This is when we have a student that might not necessarily be considered, um, you know, our highest need, but they are um, not performing academically at the level we are gonna reach out and continually try to meet the needs of these families and allow them to return in the earliest timeline. Okay, so this would be uh, upon request and upon administrative uh, discretion, okay? Beyond that, then we're gonna, we're gonna go into that schedule for two weeks, the highest need, taking us to March 15th, ladies and gentlemen. That is when we will return to the hybrid schedule. That's the AB schedule or the blue-white schedule that you may remember from the fall. So on, the Mar on March 15th, we are looking to bring our pre-K, our early intervention students, and our sixth grade students back. At that point, we will bring the sixth grade back in a split schedule, the AB schedule. But as of right now, um, I will take your, um, if you take notice to the last statement, the week of March 15th, we will update this community again as to how our integration back into school is taking place. Is it in a healthy fashion? Do we need to slow it down or are we right on track? So on the week of the 15th, I will be advertising another community night just to keep you abreast of everything that's going on and uh, let you know how it looks for the full K to 12 integration, which is that last bullet point of a tentative March 22nd full K through 12 student return however, in the hybrid fashion. So half of the student population will be in our buildings at any given point. So if you recall, I'm just gonna refresh some memories. In a hybrid schedule, we are split half, um, the student population is listed in A or um, a, a white schedule or B in the blue schedule. So the last time we were in school in October, we were in the A or the white schedule. This time we're gonna return on March 15th when the sixth grade students come back. We're gonna split that sixth grade population in half and we're gonna begin with the B or the blue schedule. So what we're gonna do is then we're gonna continually integrate more and more populations within the building. So um, March 22nd, we're gonna integrate all K through 12 students in the hybrid format, which we're gonna take them back to the A group the following week, the 29th, we'll go back to the B and we will continue to alternate back and forth from A to B throughout the remainder of this school year. Um, I'm gonna bring your attention back down to the last bullet point. All of this can abruptly change depending on the health status of our school district. If we're seeing consistent cases in the building and we are out of the building due to positive cases, then, then we are in the building, then we will return back for to uh, remote status for more consistency. Okay, um, right now we have established a tremendous amount of consistency. Is it the best format? No, it's not, but it's the safest. So um, brings me to parent choice. 
every single person on this call this evening, you're the boss. You are the boss as far as what you do with your child. So if you feel that March 1st, March 15th, March 22nd is never a healthy date for you to send your child onto a bus or into our schools, that is perfectly okay. You can continue to entertain. You can continue to entertain the, the um, remote format or you can um, entertain the hybrid format, the AB schedule. And um, these are all options that are purely up to you as a parent. The schedule speaks to um, Monday through Thursday being in person. If you are in schedule for that week and then we are closed on Friday for everybody is remote, that's teachers, that's students um, for the Friday deep clean uh, throughout the entire building. Okay, um, again, parents are the boss as far as a form of transportation. Parent could transport the student. We could also place them on our mass transit system, which are school buses. And um, you will see to try to ease your mind or try to make you more comfortable with utilizing the school district busing. Uh, we are only utilizing window seats, which is a max of 18 riders at that time. Um, the only exception to this rule is if they're siblings. So if siblings wanna sit in the same seat, you're coming from the same controlled environment, they could double up in that seat. Um, so that would allow for a, an expansion of the capacity in that bus. However, for the most part, if it's uh, blended community members, we would be utilizing the max 18 um, uh, rider uh, rule. The measures that we have taken in place are still in place um, that we, we have taken from the get-go. The Google Classrooms are going to have accessibility to the entrance tickets. Ladies and gentlemen, at that point, we are depending on you. We understand our limitations. We understand the fact that we're gonna to have to depend on you to let us know and be honest when your student is answering yes to any of the prompted questions such as, as the student experiencing a fever. Is there anybody in the household that has had COVID in the last 30 days? So on and so forth. If there's yes to any of these questions, at that point, we're gonna ask you to keep the student in the remote setting until we get the, the school district nurses to reach out to you for further clarification. So please, if you're answering yes to any of these questions, do not send the child until the nurse clarifies or gives further instruction in order to keep everybody safe throughout your child's path throughout the day. The next bullet point speaks of masks. Max, masks are mandatory at all times with the exception of their lunch. And it is also a teacher discretion. Teacher is going to um, allow for a few minute break with dropping the mask down behind a desk shield. Um, your teacher will individually um, inform you and, uh, and, and tell you what they're gonna allow or not allow. Um, the district is mandating once they step away from their desk, stand on their feet and begin to move from their controlled area, they are required to wear masks. Students are always six feet apart. We are going to continue that guideline Although there are further guidelines that are speaking to possibly reducing that to three feet, the Hanover Area School District will not be partaking in that new guideline. We are going to maintain the six feet um, regulation. The next thing is the desk shields that we have spoken of before. They're individualized to each student. They are there on a daily basis and um, they're clean daily and they are set for the Sorry about that, folks. My four-year-old comes busting in. Let me get back to where we are. Okay. So um, the the next is our desk <laughs> shield. It's individualized to each student. Their name is on it. And then um, they're clean on a daily basis. Uh, again, we had the Jan Pro surgical spray that was uh, sprayed at every square inch of our school district. This is a surgical spray that does kill the virus on contact and every other contaminant that could cause illness within the district. The, um, the company is coming out the beginning of next week to assure the efficiency because it has been time lapsed uh, beyond the six months. So if they do need to reapply, they're going to. The only time that it does need reapplication is from wear and tear or overuse. Um, 
However, we are only in the building three days, so I'm assuring that there's probably only going to be, need slight touch-ups here and there. Social, social distancing guidelines are indicated on the walls and on the floor. Uh, this is a primary focus of our youngest student population that may not understand what six feet looks like. So there's indicators on the floor, such as feet and uh, you know the, the arrows that are going to indicate how close they can be with their classmates. Um, and then the final piece, is the deep cleaning Friday. So we will have the same controlled environment on Monday through Thursday, will not be any cross contaminations of A or B schedules. And then um, we, would, uh, we would have our maintenance staff come in and uh, do the deep clean with the foggers on, on a Friday. So the next group that comes in is coming into a very sanitary environment. As, um, as I mentioned in the beginning of this call, we are strictly adhering to CDC and Department of Health and Education guidelines. Um, this is um, something that we are going to continue to adhere to. If there was ever a positive case within the district, you would be contacted uh, verbally over the phone and you would also receive a written notification of the exposure and the instructions on how to prevent further transmission and um, how to care for yourself if you did possibly be the recipient of, of uh, COVID-19. So um, the Department of, of Health and um, Education regulations are followed with the necessary closures. As I said, I do not like that, um, that one scenario where there are cases in the building that we only have to clean and we don't have to close down. Um, I will be a little bit more stringent than that and we will close the building for that day. So there are going to be interruptions for the folks that do entertain the in-person instruction. I am not going to take it lightly when we have a positive case, um, nor is this administration, nor is this custodial staff. So um, there will be interruptions in the flow of education. It will change. If your student is scheduled for in-person instruction that week, um, you will be interrupted and they will return to remote. Um, trying to be transparent and open with everyone so that we know what happens if a case comes about. There's no surprises. The final slide here is to contact. If um, while we go through the question and answers, if anybody needs to take a screenshot or needs to write down any of these email addresses, um, these are the, the administrative team that would be able to answer any further questions that maybe didn't feel comfortable asking in front of the group this evening, or if you, um, you just wanted further clarification. Um, but I hope that this was um, informative for you. We are going to post these dates for a return onto our website onto our social media so that there's always a reference point for you to return back to if you're not sure when your child returns uh, to the classroom, if you choose to entertain the in-person instruction. But at this point, I would be glad to take as much time as needed, ladies and gentlemen, to go over um, any questions, concerns, clarification that can help you make the best decision for you and your child. Um, Lisa Kitchen will call your name, please push the raise your hand icon at the bottom of the screen and she will call on folks as they come in. Okay, do we have a Michelle? Michelle? Uh, Hi, Michelle. Hi, I have a question. If we only have so many days until June 8th to go back to school. Why can't we just stay, instead of going in physical, physically in school with these children, why can't we just stay home with hybrid until the rest of the whole school year is over? Michelle, that's a great question. And that's why we're gonna leave it up to parents to entertain that option. If that's what you feel most comfortable with, Michelle, I would encourage you to do so. Um, that's something that uh, you feel most comfortable with. I believe it's the safest. Um, however, you know, some kids are not performing the best and we're, tr we're trying to provide that option for the folks that feel their, their children really need to be in front of uh, their teacher. But Michelle, that is that is your choice and you're the boss on that one. So if that's what you feel most comfortable with, please do so. I mean, my son and my daughter, they had, they were A students. Well, my daughter was an A student. My son's in kindergarten, but it's kind of confusing if we're gonna go to school, we're not gonna go to school. 
it's like, you know, it's or buts if we're ever going to go back to in-person schooling, you know. You're, you're right. You're right. All the, all the cases are going up, up and not like us as parents can't get the vaccine yet because it's so high demands of the vaccine, you know. You're right. Well, if they go, if they continue to go up, Michelle, we will all be out. Um, we will all definitely be out in remote format. Um, I, I am never going to put anyone in harm's way um, to bring back home any any bit of the virus or anything to your children and uh, to continually spread in our community. And uh, I, I think that we have, I know for a fact, the Hanover Area School District has not been a contributing factor in Luzerne County's alarming rates. So um, that's something I'm proud of. And that is something that this administrative team and this board of education is very proud of. So uh, Michelle, I appreciate the, uh, the recommendation and that is yours for the taking. Thank you. We're, we're, new, to, we're new to this area. So we're from Easton because that school district down there, they're all high and uh, remotely online. They're all, oh, well, we're new to this area. We just moved here, so. Well, welcome Michelle. Thanks. Okay, is there a Jason? Yes, I have a, it's, it's more of a, a two-part question, I suppose. Hi, Jason. Um, now, I know we have, it's, our, our rates are based off of the zip code and the population. Now, yes, I, know, I know our zip code goes up into Wilkesburg Township, everything else, and we also have the, the only huge industrial park in this area, how is all that affecting this? Well, the the address of the person who is um, testing positive, that would be what zip code the positive case is attributed to. So if if I work, because I, I live in Lackawanna County, if I work in Hanover, if I became positive, it would be attributed to where I live in Lackawanna County. So, um, so the the industrial. I hope I'm answering your question correctly, Jason. But um, it, I don't think the numbers are increasing based on the amount of employees that converge on Hanover for the day. Um, if that's what I'm, if I'm answering your question correctly, is that am I am I answering that correctly? Did I lose Jason? No, I'm here. I, I would assume that that would be some sort of an issue, though, because I would think that a lot of people in the area live very close to the industrial park. Because I mean, I know just where I live, there's a, a large population that lives here that works in the industrial park. So I mean, I, that's got to be some sort of contribution to that high positivity rate. Well, if they live there and work there, it's going to be attributed to that. Right. I mean, I think that's just you know causing a lot of an issue with that, pushing the rate up, and that's really not fair to us, but we, I guess in a way we can't do anything about that. So you're saying the residents that live and work there are pushing it up? It, it, is, it is possible because there there we saw on the news there was outbreaks at Chewy, Adidas, and if they live around here, that's going to cause an issue. Sure. You know what I mean? Of course, and, yep. That's why we remain closed. And, and my other question is, we continually discussed how we have the best system in the, the valley for detecting, you know, temperatures of the students and all this stuff and all that. But how is it that with the best system in the in the state, other districts in the area are still opening? Well, the the other districts that are opening up. So I guess that this is the two part question that you were speaking of. Um, right. I wasn't going to utilize the system at all, knowing the positivity rate that was within the 18706 zip code. Uh, because of the fact of the jeopardy that I would be placing all the teachers and other classmates in if I um, neglectfully brought students in going beyond the recommend, re recommendation of both departments of education and health. Um, they said to utilize the remote format, and that's what I felt most comfortable with to keep you 
and everyone else that lives in 18706 as healthy as possible. I, I, I don't know. I, I guess it just it's still become a parent frustration as well. And it's and it's just questions that are arising because you know I just can't wait to get our kids back in school. <laughs> and, and Jason, I understand that. And I guess at this point we're all trying to help one another um, stay healthy. And when we look at it that way, we're surviving a pandemic. Um, you know, and it's not the easiest way to educate kids when you're battling through a crisis like this. So, oh, trust me, um, I, have, I have two kids that went from A and now they're low C, so I get it. <laughs> yep. Well, they remained healthy. No, we all, the, our whole house had COVID. We, we got through it. Okay. <laughs> we, we survived. <laughs> Okay. All right. Thank, I, I believe. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Holly. Hi, Mr. Hi, Barrett. Hey, Hi. I just wanted to thank you so much for using an abundance of caution. Um, you know, my daughter is in the fifth grade. She is too young to get the vaccine. And I just appreciate that you are really taking an abundance of caution for both your students and your staff and keeping the children home. I know it's hard. I know it's not easy for these parents. Um, and, and I sympathize. However, I just really appreciate that we could keep our children home and keep them safe because they are too young to be vaccinated. So I appreciate you and everything that you do for this district. I thank you for the kind words, Mrs. Evans. It's gonna look like it was staged, Holly. So we work together. <laughs> Well, I know, but that's not a working thing. This is just a heart to heart thing. I appreciate it. And as does my entire family. I, I'm teasing. I appreciate that very much. I thank you. Cassandra. Hi, Cassandra. Cassandra, are you still here? Yes, I'm sorry, I am. Um, I just have a quick question. Back when we had our last community meeting, I brought it to the attention that I was trying to get in touch with Mr. McCree due to attendance and discussing an attendance plan. And I reached out to him numerous times via phone, and I also reached out to him email, and I still have yet to hear anything back. And this is over a month now. Okay, uh, Cassandra, then what I recommend is if you could possibly take a screenshot of this last slide that we have up here um, and send me yeah. an email tomorrow and I'll make sure that th this gets brought to his attention. All right, thank you very much. I thank you, Cassandra. Amy Jasler. Good evening, um, Good Mr. Evening, Barrett, Amy. I was just, hi, how are you? Good, nice, nice um, talking. Thank you. Um, I just was wondering if there were any plans moving forward for the senior class. So like we haven't heard anything, everything's been canceled for these poor kids. Mm -hmm. And we just wondered, um, you know, all, a lot of us parents are wondering what the plan was moving forward between, you know, normal senior events versus graduation, et cetera. Yeah, so uh, I have two things that I've been working with a parent and a guidance counselor to try to raise some funds to, um, to celebrate them during this this difficult time. Um, so I am working on that as we speak um, to try to raise funds to get recognition in a remote fashion. And I, I, I'm going to try not to disclose too much. Um, it's not as good as if it was a prom or anything like that. But, um, you know, it's some type of recognition that I don't want to spoil the fun. But um, I will tell you that I have booked um, a location for the graduation already that we will slowly begin to un unravel uh, in the near future. So they are on my mind. Um, I'm trying to battle through this health crisis, but um, I have not forgotten them. And uh, under the current, we are working on them. And I can assure you that they are not going to be forgotten. Thank you. Matt. I'm guessing that's me. Hi, Matt. Hi. Um, so again, I have two quick questions. Um, and sort of to what the uh, gentleman earlier was asking about, um, can the district share this, these metrics of the positivity 
percent positivity rate. And the reason I ask is that I, out of curiosity, I, I cannot find zip code based. I could find Luzerne County based sure. PCR and it has, it is actually dropping. They're listing the, the county as 10.5%. So okay. I, I'm just curious as to why ours has been from a month ago till now hovering in the, in the mid twenties where the county's actually 10 and a half as of right now, you know, the previous seven days. So it, that'd be helpful. If you could just share it for nerds like me that like to look at this stuff. Um, yeah. and, and you and I are in the same boat because it's all I stare is at, 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 are these figures. Graphs and stuff. Um, and then the second, my second question is you mentioned before about um, if there is a, if there is a, a positive found in a school. Well, let's just say hypothetically it's Memorial. You find there's a, there's a one sure. or two cases found. Sure. Um, you're just going to shut that school down. Correct. I mean, it's correct. not going to be every single school. Cause of I, course. I okay. I, I just I, wanted to clarify that. And I appreciate you bringing that to my attention. Uh, I, I, I did say shut down, but it will be school specific. So okay. Matt, I thank you. Um, Matt, if you could just answer me one question, the, the 10.5% of Luzerne County today, I, the, on the department of health, I saw 21%. Um, could you just tell me where you're finding the 10.5 yeah. on the? Yeah, it's it's the, the health.pa.gov and it's COVID-19 early warning monitoring system dashboard. But like I said, it only lists, you could only, there's a map and you select okay. Luzerne and then down it has a blue chart and it has okay. your PCR past okay. seven days, so. Sure, and there's there's a dashboard for reopening schools. That's where I obtain my information, and you have to put in the administrative codes. So it wasn't something that's easily access, accessible to the community. Mm -hmm. And um, the uh, the county is then broken up specifically into the zip codes. So the problem, the, the even the better piece um, for us is that. I could just specifically select 18706, um, even though that does encompass a piece of Nanticoke and a portion of wilkes mm -hmm. So, um, but it does the bulk of it, I, I would say is is our community. So, um, so that's where I get that specific and precise. As a matter of fact, it breaks it down in the facilities um, that are housed within that zip code as well. So um, it, it's it's very, very, very precise. And allows me to make a very, very scientific and educated um, decision for our kids. So I don't want you to think it's a willy nilly type of site that I'm on. And um, um, curiosity, because, yep. you know, I look at sure. the county rate and just it's a school why. board. It, it's, it's a Pennsylvania school board reopening dashboard, it's called. So, okay. um, so if you have somebody that has a professional um, educator ID, um, you would have access to it. Okay. Thank you. And thanks to everybody for what you're doing. It's I know it's it's crazy and it's not something we're used to. So but thanks. Thanks thank you, me. Matt. I appreciate you saying that. Okay. Michelle Okonski. Hi, I'm here. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. Hi, Mr. Barrett. Two quick questions. Um, now you said that if the shutdown has to happen, it would be school specific to where the cases are, but yet these kids share these buses throughout all the buildings. Correct. So how do you just shut down one building when you got kids from all different buildings riding these same buses? So there's so many moving parts with this, Michelle, that if we did track down the fact that this, let's say Nathan Barrett, was positive for the day and he rode bus 13. Um, everybody that rode bus 13 after him could potentially cause the shutdown, okay? That's not to say that this is not an impossibility. But what I'm saying to you is that if there was a specific case in a building that um, a student was positive within a classroom, we had it narrowed down to where his or her movements were, um, we can isolate and contact trace um, in order to make an educated decision to just close down that school. But you are 100% accurate when you state that this does have more moving parts to it than simple, you know, classroom 102 had a positive case. As a result, we're shutting down that wing of the school. Um, there, are there is the potential 
that it was the first run of the day on the bus. And now everybody who rode that bus following um, would be susceptible to being quarantined. Now, it would be isolated to the passengers on that bus. Thankfully, we're limiting, we're limiting it to 18, um, not only to keep the social distancing piece intact, but it also is minimizing the risk of exposure to others. Um, but you're right, it could be a little bit too late after a student has done the first run of the day and three runs followed that student. So that is why I have been diligent with trying to eliminate all these possibilities by remaining in the remote status. Okay, and my second question with um, graduation, having a tentative date of June 8th, um, can you give us a little bit more information on like, is this going to be a, and I'm only asking because many of us have family from out of the area. It's that, definitely June 8th, it's definitely right. June 8th. So, I mean, are we going to be able to have more than a limited amount like they did last year at the Garden Drive-In? Or it's, you know, it's, I mean, I have family out in California that would love to come in. I have family in sure. Michigan. And of course, you know, when they come in here, they may have to quarantine for two weeks before they can go anywhere. Sure. And then to find out that they can't even attend this, you know, they just spend a hell of a lot of money on airline tickets. Yeah, so that's a great point, Michelle. So what we're going to do is um, now that this has popped up twice this evening, you are prompting me to move forward and meet with the high school staff. And we will host a similar format as this just for senior parents and un unveil the plan and then move forward. And uh, we'll take it from there. OK, okay. Um, that sound fair. That, absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheyenne? Hello, I just have a question. Hi, Cheyenne. Well, this is Melissa, I'm her mom, but um, last Zoom meeting, I had asked the question, if come March 1st, the numbers were just as high as they were when we had the last Zoom meeting, would we still continue within school come March 1st? And your reply was yes. I just wanna know what changed. What changed is the new guidelines and our willingness to step out a little bit from what we had told you in the last one. Um, that was based on, my willingness to step out is based on the steady decline in positivity rates and um, the, uh, the, the percentage rates that are going down, not only in our county, but our zip code. So it's allowing me to step out a little bit further of my comfort zone and move closer to what I'm assuming is your your desire to um, have your child back in. If I'm not mistaken, it was kindergarten? Well, yeah, I have one in kindergarten and one in eighth grade. Okay, so, so both kindergarten and eighth grade, um, as these rates are trending downward, I'm feeling a bit more comfortable. So um, exactly what I said last meeting was if the numbers remain the same, um, we would remain the same, but that's not the case. Okay, thank you. Luke Matthews. Hi, Mr. Barrett. Good evening, Luke. Uh, quick question. Are, is there gonna be a reminder of sorts for um, what group or color the students are when it comes to the, the schedules? Yes, sir. So we have already worked with this with the administration um, they will inform the, um, the families of what group the child is based on last name. Now, we did work closely with families before in the past that might have multiple last names. Um, so we are already, this is already on the radar. We are moving forward with this. There's a plan in place that this will be coming out within the next week. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else have a question for Mr. Barrett? Okay, Mr. Barrett, there are no more questions. Folks, thank you so much for coming aboard this evening and uh, everybody stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. B. Have a great night, Mikhail. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Thank you.
everybody have a great night.